Hello everyone. In uh, this example, we're actually going to see what the game of Victory at Sea Naval Miniatures actually looks like. We're going to be doing this in tabletop sim just to kind of simplify things size-wise. So um, our current engagement is a pretty well-balanced straight-up engagement. On the left side here, we have the Fletcher, we have the Brooklyn, and we have the Hudson. On the right side here, a little bit more difficult from the Japanese, we have the Kumano, we have the Koro Shio, and we also have the Oyo Shio, which are extremely good destroyers. Uh, taking a look through the little sheets here, the detailed sheets, I have them right in front of me. Um, let's see here, the Japanese definitely beat us in terms as everything, but yeah, they beat us in everything. They've got superior gunnery as far as range goes, although a lot of the shots are going to be hard to do. They've got spectacular torpedoes. I mean, if they miss, then things are going to be easier. And um, we're going to have to hope for the best here and see what kind of happens. So anyway, let's go ahead and get rolling. So we start, as always, by rolling our initiative. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of dice. I'm going to go ahead and roll. So for the Americans, they got six. For the Japanese, they got nine. Now, um, normally what you would do is you'd nominate which side gets to move their first ship. So in this case, the um, Japanese are going to move first. So on um, the first ship here, I'm not going to nominate any special actions at this point for the cruiser, but I'm going to go ahead and move him normally. He gets a speed of 7. So we're going to go ahead and mark out 7. And we're going to go ahead and move ourselves there. We're going to approach the American fleet directly. Uh, then the Americans get to nominate one of their ships. So um, I kind of have a plan in mind, and we're going to try to do the best we can. So we're going to take the Fletcher, and uh, he has a 7-inch move, but I'm going to use flank speed on him. So um, that increases my 7 move. You get to um, take half of that, which is 3.5, round up to 4. It gives me 11, but I'm only going to use 10 inches of that. You'll see why in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward 5 inches. Then I'm going to go ahead and give myself a uh, 1 point turn here. Go ahead and get this out of the way. And then I'm going to proceed the next 5 inches. All right, now the Japanese get to move a ship as well. So um, they're going to keep the torpedo division pretty much with the cruiser itself. So the torpedoes have a range of 7 inches. They're not going to use any special commands. They're just going to charge ahead. So now the Americans get to go ahead and nominate one of their next vehicles to move, or I should say ships. So I'm going to do the exact same maneuver I did with that other destroyer with this one. Go ahead and position this right here. It's a little easier on a table. We're going to go ahead and move its points. Make sure it's in the same spot. Get this out of the way. Whoop. I'm going to go ahead and move the rest of my five inches. I know I've made a mistake here because it's uh, not nearly as perpendicular. So let's see if I can fix that. Uh, let's see here what's going on with the table, Sam. Here we go. There we go. So it's going to move him to about there. So the Japanese get to nominate another ship. In this case, it's going to be the other Kagero class. He gets to move up seven inches as well. And he's going to stay in a nice tight formation here with his buddy. Um, it's now the Americans' turn. Uh, the Brooklyn-class cruiser is actually got turning of 2 as well. His speed is 7. He is also going to do a flank speed action, which gets him a nice speed of 10. So I'm going to come forward. Let's see. Remember, you got to move at least half. So I'm going to come forward that much. I'm going to take my 2-point turn. You can use your imagination. And I'm going to go ahead and... Whoa, can't do that. Move up the other few inches here. I'm actually going to move him less. There we go. Okay, so now we are done with the movement phase, and now we move to the attack phase. So, um, without being an expert again, if this were in VR, it'd be a little easier to judge distances, but you know, you can kind of take your head down here and do one of these things and say, well, what's the rough distance? He's something along those lines, but um, he's a pretty good distance away, so I'm going to uh, venture a guess that he's out of range for the Brooklyn. The Brooklyn's weapons have a 27 inch range. I'm pretty confident this is 30 or even 40 something. On the Japanese side, however, the um, Mogami class, this particular one's the Kumano, he is going to choose to attack um, our ship. He's going to be attacking the Brooklyn directly. So the first thing he has to do is measure range. We like to measure range in this game from the center to center. And that gets us not 36 inches, but 55 inches away. So the guns fire, and uh, taking a look at the range of the Mogami, he has a range of 33. They land mm, right about here. So unfortunately, it doesn't work too too well for that initial turn. I've got no damage control to do, so now the game is going to continue with the next turn. So like before, we're going to go ahead and roll initiative. See if things go better for the Americans. Uh, snake eyes. 
and versus the Japanese with a 4. So the Japanese are again going to elect to go first. So in this particular case, uh, we're going to continue attacking. He wants to close the range quickly, so he's going to use a flank speed option, which is going to increase his speed to 10 also. Looks like about 10 right there, so ooh, he's closing quick. So over here on the American side, I'm also going to uh, move my guys at flank speed. Moving up here, that gives me 10 inches of motion. I'm a little concerned that's going to get us a little close, but I am moving very fast, and I do not have a broadside, so he is not going to be able to hit me easily. Switching back over to him, these guys are also, of course, going to execute flank speed, which is one of those commands. He's going to scoot all the way up here. Switching back over to the American side, um, this Fletcher is also going to go ahead and do the flank speed, which gives me a speed of 10. Puts it right there. Now the Japanese gets to move his other gentleman as well. Again, he's going to do all the way up to 10 inches, so I'm just going to right up alongside. Now things are going to get interesting. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the Brooklyn, and we're going to move the Brooklyn up its normal speed of 7. Hmm. Okay, so now we begin the attack phase. So my Fletchers are easily out of range of the Japanese ships. Uh, the two Kigeros are definitely out of range. The uh, Mogami, uh, on the flip side, the Kumano, is definitely feeling really confident, so it's going to take a shot at the Brooklyn-class ship. Again, measuring center to center, that gives us a range of 37 inches. The shells, again, land short. Actually, had he taken a shot, uh, he wouldn't be able to hit him. The shells land somewhere right there. So uh, my evil plan is starting to uh, get into effect here. Now we move on to the next turn. So the Americans roll initiative. We're going to go ahead and grab the Japanese. By the way, these are 10 minute turns. So for those of you guys keeping track, this is our third turn. So this is almost a half an hour later. So the Japanese roll four. The Americans this time score a great number. They actually score nine. So the Americans get to elect who gets to go first. So in my case, I'm actually going to say, all right, I like to go first. So I'm going to go ahead and move my Fletcher class destroyer, but I'm going to do something special. I'm going to nominate to have him lay smoke. So um, you don't have to roll anything special for smoke. It's considered automatic. So what I'm going to have him do is I'm going to have him move half of his distance, which is 3.5. And behind him, he is going to lay a bunch of smoke. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him do a standard turn. Remember, for this particular character, uh, he has the ability to move two because he's nice and maneuverable. So I'm going to move him two clicks like that. And I'm going to have him move the other three and a half. Oop, keep in mind, we're measuring from the front of the ship. We might as well be consistent. And now I'm going to go ahead and drop another smoke marker directly behind him. All right, your turn. So the Japanese are looking at this suddenly blocking out the smoke. Um, again, smoke is good for uh, two turns. So when you do lay smoke, you have the ability to uh, remove that smoke a little later on, as you'll see. I'm just going to double check real quick to make sure. Special actions, lay smoke. Uh, let's see. It gets removed in the end phase. So um, we're going to move that a little later on. Okay, so it's now the Japanese turn to elect a unit to move. So he's going to opt to move um, the Kumama, Kumano. rather. Again, he's going to attack him and move at normal speed because he's fairly confident he's going to have a shot on that destroyer in a minute, but we'll see how that goes. So uh, switching back to the Americans, I'm going to do the exact same maneuver with the um, uh, DD Hudson here. So I'm going to move forward three and a half inches. I'm going to try really hard not to collide with this guy. At the same time, is I'm going to go ahead and lay some smoke with him as well. Now we're going to execute that turn. In this case, I'm going to just do two 15-degree notches. Theoretically, those should be perpendicular. And we're going to go ahead and move the other three and a half, oop, three and a half inches as well, right there. And we're going to continue with another chunk of smoke. All right, Japan, your turn. So um, they're, of course, going to keep the destroyers going. Uh, they're fairly confident they know what my plan is going to be here. But um, I still think I can win this one, and you'll see what I mean. So uh, the Kagero class, uh, this is the Koroshio, uh, decided to, of course, uh, speed up. He's going to do a 7-inch move as well, and he's going to try to get as close to those American destroyers as possible. So now the Brooklyn is going to do what the Brooklyn is going to do. Now, my whole point for laying the smoke was to prevent the um, Kagero, 
this guy over here, the Nomogami rather, from getting a free shot on him before I'm in lethal range. We'll see if that pays off. So anyway, the Brooklyn can still move seven, doing a quick pre-measure here. Um, keeping him inside the smoke would put him in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move three and a half, and then I think I'm going to move two. Do Remember, he gets two notches of click, puts him here. I'm going to put him right here. And he's not going to do any special actions this turn. Okay, Japanese get to nominate another ship to go. In this case, it is going to be the other destroyer. He's going to stay in formation. All right, gunnery time. Now, the interesting thing here is I've used the smoke. Whenever you have smoke, you can't, when you draw a line of sight for attacks, you can't draw it through smoke. So in this particular case, the Brooklyn is not a valid target. For unfortunately, of course, smoke works both ways, so the Brooklyn is now completely buried by smoke and can't shoot out. That's unfortunate. That means our Fletchers are going to be the first victims. Since we won initiative, we get to go first as far as attacks, because attacks are not simultaneous. So um, I'm going to elect to use my Fletcher to attack um, over here. This is the Koro Shio. Now, my Fletchers, if I recall correctly, don't have a 22-inch range. No, they have a 12-inch range. So my Fletcher shots come out in land nice and short in the water like that. So I'm going to remember that for the next time. So then he gets to go. So, of course, the Mogami, you always want to use the biggest firepower first, is going to take a crack at our Fletcher here. Time to get out the dice. All right, first things first, we have to figure out what the range is. So again, we're going to use center to center. That gets us a range of about 21 inches. So our normal target on this little Fletcher over here, if I hold my mouse over him long enough, is a six up. But the Fletcher moved seven inches and it's at long range. That would mean that unless the, uh, the particular ship, the Kagero, has radar, he is unable to actually hit him no matter what. And he does, oh, uh, let's take a look. Uh, not the Kagero, the Mogami class rather. He does not have radar. That means this shot's actually impossible because it would be a seven up. That also means for the poor Kageros, the destroyers over here, even if they did have the range, which they don't in this particular case, they wouldn't be able to hit him either. So my plan is a success. The Japanese are unable to climb. And now we move on to the end phase. So the end phase in this particular case is pretty straightforward. We're just simply going to take all the smoke and remove it. Maybe we'll need that smoke again later. And we do any damage control rolls, which at this time we do not need. Good. Now, this is going to be a big deal. Whoever wins initiative this round is probably going to get first blood. We'll see what happens. So the Americans got a 6. The Japanese got a 10. Oh, no. So the Japanese are going to elect to allow the Americans to move their ship first. And I kind of knew that was coming. And I kind of want to throw away the uh, movement here. But at the same token is um, my destroyers are in a really, really bad way no matter what happens. They just don't have the range. So I'm actually going to elect to move the Fletchers first. So um, I get 7-inch moves. i got to keep the speed up on these guys. So I'm going to use half of my move to move forward. Then I'm going to go ahead and rotate two notches. And then I'm going to use the rest of my move. Again, I get 7 inches to scoot over here. That's that's interesting, but the fact of the matter is he's going to be harder to hit because of that move. So this guy is going to do exactly the same thing. All right. Oh! <laughs> Japanese get to move first. All right, so the Japanese, of course, are going to move first. Um, they can see exactly what's happening here. So in this case, the uh, Kumano is got to get a good broadside in there. So I'm guessing, if I didn't know better, I would say he's probably going to take a turn to starboard, which is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it three and a half. He's going to come forward. He gets two clicks. Going to come up another three and a half. And that puts him something like this. So he's also moved very quickly, making him a tough target. So now we can go and get this other American destroyer and put him roughly where we saw him before. So now it's a Japanese turn again. Now, this is an interesting situation. Um, by splitting my forces, the Japanese have to decide whether they want to concentrate on one or the other or they want to split their own forces, which makes the battle a little bit more even if it weren't for the superior Japanese torpedoes. So in this particular case, um, I know my torpedoes are amazing, so I'm going to do the best I can to try to employ them against the Fletcher. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, just a straight up 7-inch move like that. Americans get to go again. 
in this particular case, um, I know I'm in trouble. So I'm going to move my three and a half. Get to move the two clicks. Then I'm going to move my other three and a half. So at least my speed is up. There we are. Oh, this is going to get messy. So the other Japanese destroyer doesn't really have a shot on anybody right now, but he is going to go ahead and move up and stay in formation. All right, attacking. Okay, here we go. So the Japanese won initiative, which means they get to elect who's going to attack first. Now, there's a lot of different, different ideas here, because remember, the more damage we can do earlier, the better things will be for us. So we're going to go ahead and obviously nominate this guy as our first attack. This is the Kumano. So uh, taking a look at the statistics on the Kumano real quick. I have it right in front of me. Uh, let's see, the Mogami Heavy Cruiser is one, two, three, four, five turrets, but there's only four that can uh, face the, uh, I should say two, that can face the Brooklyn at this time, not including its secondary armament. So uh, main armament into this guy. So I'm going to measure center to center. That gets me a range of 13.6, which is out of range of the secondary armament, but it's completely in range of my A and B turret. My A and B turret each get a single attack dice. So we're going to go ahead and roll that. The target number on the Brooklyn is going to be a 5, but it's going to also be a 6 because it's 7 inches minus 1 because it's a broadside, so it's still going to be a 5. So in this case, the Japanese get a single hit. So uh, the damage dice on this particular weapon, double checking, is a single D6, and the armor on the Brooklyn, I believe, is a 3-up. So we'll go ahead and give this a quick roll, see what happens. 5. That means the Brooklyn has taken a hit. It is not a critical hit, but it is a hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot over here to the Brooklyn. I'm going to go ahead and say he's got 12 hit points remaining. So he definitely winged him, but it wasn't too, too bad. The Americans now get to nominate one of their craft to attack uh, the Japanese. So in this case, uh, the Fletcher is going to attack the Kagero, the Koroshiro here. So we're going to go middle, middle to middle. That gives us a range of 11.5 inches, which taking a quick look at the Fletcher's range gives us a range of 12 inches, which means we are actually in range for a secondary attack. So um, we're going to go ahead and attack it. We get a single dice for this. But hey, there are better things. Maybe we get a critical hit. You never know. So the target number on that destroyer, since he's looking at us from the front, it's going to be a 6. He moves 7 inches, which makes it a 7. So this attack's actually not possible. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it, because you can't actually get a good hit on him. That's unfortunate. Uh, since our range is too far, we can't fire a torpedo either, which again, that's too bad. All right, so the Japanese get to go ahead and uh, nominate one of their ships now. So they're going to nominate uh, this guy right here, the Koroshiro. He is also 11 inches away, taking a look at his statistics right here, Kagero class. He has a range of 12. So let's take a look. Um, we're definitely attacking from the front arc. This is secondary armament. It can attack anywhere. I wouldn't really say we're getting that much of a broadside on that particular ship. But um, there is a way to check that if you're ever in a situation where you're not sure. We can always take this here, and then we can always go like this and see if it's possible for us. If we had two of these templates, to see if his uh, shot comes through it. And taking a look, it does look like he's actually got a uh, shot on the guy's side. So um, we are going to count that. So he's moved a total of 7 inches, but he's providing a side shot, so that gets it down to a 6 or higher. So he gets to roll a single die and hope for a 6 or better. 3. So the uh, this particular ship, the Koroshiro, completely misses. Now the Americans get to attack. So the Americans are going to use the Brooklyn class. We've been waiting for this for a while. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure range over here. It's uh, 14 inches. Taking a look, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 attack dice to attack with on this Japanese ship. So um, we're going to go ahead and grab our little blue dice here. Now, the Japanese ship, because it moves 7 inches, is going to be plus 1. We're not at long range, and we're not getting his beam. So normally, he is a 5-up. That makes it a 6-up. So only 6 is hit. So there is our 6. So the armor rating on the uh, Mogami class, the Kumano over here, is a 3-up. So unless I get a 3 or higher, I can't actually damage him, even though I hit him. 1. So that would mean the Brooklyn shot 
hit the ship but didn't actually penetrate or anything along those lines. My secondary armament is only a 10 inch range which if you remember from our last shot we're 13 away is not going to actually do any damage. So now we go back to the Japanese. So um, this guy in the back, the OSIO, I believe is completely out of range. Again, you're not allowed to pre-measure but this is just for example. So um, there's nothing we can do there. Flipping back the other way, uh, the Fletcher of course could nominate this guy but I already knew he was out of range. So that is the end of this phase. So um, the Americans uh, got, uh, I should say, the Japanese got first blood here and dinged up the Brooklyn just a teeny tiny bit, but again, no critical hits, nothing along those lines, and now we continue to the next turn. So um, this battle's been going 40 minutes now, so now we're going to go ahead and roll initiative once more. So the Americans get a 5 for initiative, the Japanese get a 9 for initiative. So in this particular case, I can tell what the Japanese are going to do from a mile away, and you can probably see it if you're watching. So what the Japanese are going to do is they're going to elect to move the Kumano first. And they're going to do the classic crossing the team maneuver, but they're just not going to have enough oomph to get there. He'd rather not use his uh, flank speed, because if he does, it's going to hurt his attack. So he's going to go 3.5, do his 2 clicks... Then he's going to come up his rest of his three and a half to try to give a really good broadside, a really point blank range into the Brooklyn. Joke's on us. The Brooklyn gets to move next. So now the Americans get to nominate a ship. I'm nominating the Brooklyn. So the Brooklyn, of course, is um, going to take advantage of the situation. And it's going to cross the T in the Japanese. Ha ha! So this is point blank range. There's no penalty to this, but I guarantee you this is going to be a messy exchange. The Japanese get to nominate another ship. In this case, they're going to nominate this guy. He gets a seven inch move. He's going to approach seven inches like this. The Americans also get a seven inch move. I guess we're going to do a little bit of broadside action here. So we'll go ahead and mark that out. Two notches. Another three and a half. Again, much easier to do on a real tabletop. Japanese is going to stay in the formation. And uh, the Hudson, who's way, way over here, again, he's got to keep that speed up. So he's going to probably stay in formation here. He's going to come. Two notches of motion. Uh, we're blocking line of sight, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to, it's going to be an oh, No, we got line of sight. It's just going to be tough. Okay, so next turn. So the Japanese won initiative, so they get to nominate what's going to happen first. So um, without... Any further ado, uh, we can tell that the Kagero class, this is the Oshio, is going to be attacking the Fletcher class. So uh, this is going to be pretty one-sided, but um, we'll see what happens. You never know, right? Okay, so um, the secondary armament is range 12, one attack dice. So our range in this particular case is six and a half, but we only get one attack dice. Hitting the destroyer is going to be tricky. He moves seven inches, so that makes his to hit number actually a seven, but it's a broadside, so it drops down to six. So six or better. One. So the Japanese miss. So the Fletcher's feeling pretty confident today. So next, you've got to do this. We're going to use the Brooklyn class to attack uh, the Kumano over here. So um, I really don't even need to measure that range. It's <laughs> six inches away. So um, it's going to be a heck of a broadside that we're about to deliver here. So we have one, two, three, four, five plus secondary armament that we're able to attack the uh, Mogami with. So we're not hitting his side. He also moves seven inches. So he becomes a six up to hit. So come on, sixes. Let's see what happens. One hit. So the armor rating on this guy is a three up, so we need at least a three. A six. Ooh, this is interesting. So first things first, the Mogami has taken his first hit. So uh, he goes down to 13. But there's a possibility of a critical. A critical is confirmed on a roll of a four higher. One. I've seen a lot of ones today. So the critical is not confirmed, but at least the Americans dinged him. So now we're going to use our secondary armament, which has an attack dice of two, believe it or not. Oh, by the way, oh, I forgot that. So this particular uh, vessel has two things that I'm completely ignoring, even though I'm staring right at it. First of all, it gets to reroll any misses for attacks. Second of all, it also um, has to subtract one from its attacks, but it got a six before, so it's fine. So um, we actually have to reroll those four misses that we had. Not that it mattered anyway. All right, so now we go ahead and grab the secondary arm. Remember, secondary arm can attack anybody. So we get a two attack dice. This is also twin linked, so I'm able to reroll any that I'm not happy with. So we get a five and a six. So the hit number in this guy is a six, because if you remember, we moved seven inches. He's not uh, beaming us. We got one hit on him. We can reroll this, because it's a twin linked weapon. Swing and a miss. 
So now we need to roll for damage. Remember, this is weak. So even though normally his uh, armor score is a four, it's essentially a uh, f a three rather. It's essentially a four because of the weak shells. We got it anyway. So our secondary weapons FTW. So now we've actually gotten a second hit on the Mogami, knocking him down to 12. Not too bad, if you ask me. So now the Japanese get to go ahead and nominate what they're going to do next. So the Japanese are, of course, going to uh, get some revenge here. Actually, they already got revenge, so um, they're going to go ahead and do the destroyer thing. Actually, no, we did that already. What am I saying? Difficult to keep track of. So um, the Kumano, of course, is going to go ahead and do his thing at this point. So um, he's pretty close range. He's six. Taking a look, again, he can only use his front batteries because he's only pointing directly at him. So let's see here. We get uh, A and B turret. We get one attack dice for each. So grabbing this. Keep in mind, this is a, a short range. His target number is a 5-up. It goes to a 6-up for his motion, but it goes back down to a 5-up because he's beaming. doesn't matter. Both miss. Now it's time for the Americans. So the Fletcher is going to attempt to attack the Kagero, and it's going to do it in two different ways. The first thing it's going to do, of course, is to launch a torpedo. So we're going to leave that right there for later on. Second, it's going to use its secondary armament, which we are in range to utilize. Um, for a Fletcher, is it one dice or is it two? Uh, we get one dice for um, secondary armament, but you never know. So normally this would be a 6-up. It goes up to a 7 for the 7 inches, back to a 6 because it's a beam. And we missed anyway. So now the Japanese get to do their last thing. So they're going to go ahead and grab the Korashiro, and they're going to attack the other Fletcher Destroyer. They're going to start with their secondary armament, which is in range. They get a single die for that. Don't go off the table. Misses, because again, the target would be a six, but then they also choose to attack with a torpedo, which we'll have to evaluate in about two seconds. Okay, now it's time to see what the torpedoes actually do. So we'll go ahead and evaluate the torpedo from the Kagero into the uh, Hudson over there first. So his torpedo attack dice is a total of five. It's probably the end of this destroyer, but you never know. So it's going to be a plus one in this roll. So it's a six, but you don't take those other modifiers into account, so um, it's going to remain at a 5. Speed and things like that don't count with torpedo rolls. Or no range penalties, I should say. But the fact that he went quickly... Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's take a look here. We don't want to make a mistake here. Yes, they do not use normal modifiers, so we just use the regular modifier. So in this case, his 6 becomes a 5 because it's a broadside. So let's go ahead and roll the attack dice and see what happens. So if 1, 2, 3 successful hits, we get 5 attack dice per individual hit when using this particular kind of Japanese torpedo. So that means, since we have three successful hits, we get 15 dice. Armor on this guy is not terribly good. It's a two up, so anything greater than two will cause damage to the poor Fletcher. Whoop, that was an explosion. One, two, uh, he's dead. The Fletcher only had three hit points, so he is literally annihilated. Blown out of the water. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. The good news is the Americans get to do the same thing in a second, hopefully. So um, the Fletcher, who is uh, right here, this is why you do torpedoes afterwards, because they hit later. The Fletcher also gets five torpedoes against this destroyer. Wouldn't have been smart to use them sooner. So um, again, we're going to do a six, but since it's a beam, it goes down to five. One, two, three. Three, nope, just two hits. So we get five dice twice because we're doing two hits. This might not actually work. The armor value on the Kagero, as you're aware of, is only a two up. So as long as I score three of these, he's toast. Yeah, he's toast. So again, torpedoes are incredible if used correctly. The reason this guy didn't fire is because I was trying to save that. Okay, so um, things are getting interesting. Oh, we're now down. Um, the Fletcher still lives. The Korashio still lives. And the Kumano still lives. But unfortunately, the Oyai Show is um, completely destroyed. We're going to go ahead and uh, edit this card real quick. He's out of the fight. Going over on the American side as well. The Hudson, unfortunately, did not make it. Now you can see why initiative is so important. There's no damage control rolls, so we're just going to keep moving on. All right, time for initiative again. 
The Americans got 10. The Japanese got 8. So it looks like Americans have initiative today. So um, in this particular case, I'm going to let the Japanese go first because the Japanese are in a situation where he's going to have to basically turn at the last second. He can also nominate the other one, but he's... He's toast either way because we have an even number of ships. So he's going to start by moving him three and a half forward. Again, keeping to this uh, seven inch thing, he's going to do two notches. Oop, then he's going to move another three and a half forward. So he's basically coming right up alongside the Brooklyn here. So the Brooklyn is um, also going to uh, go ahead saying, okay, fine. He's going to move um, four inches forward. He gets his double turn. And then he's going to move a total of three inches forward. Ha ha! Crossed again! So uh, now the uh, Japanese are going to go ahead and move um, their other destroyer. Destroyers, of course, pass, so they're going to try to keep their speed up. He's going to move a total of three and a half inches forward. Double click. He's going to move his other three and a half inches forward. And he's practically out of range of the Fletcher! It's a good thing that uh, both of these guys, he has no torpedoes left. He still has a torpedo, and I guarantee he's going to use it. So uh, it's the Fletcher's turn now. I'm not stupid. I'm going to order up flank speed. I'm going to put as much distance between me and him as possible. So I'm going to come forward five inches, rotate twice, then come forward another five inches all the way out to here. Ha ha! Okay, now it's shooting turn. So, um, in this particular case, the Brooklyn is, I should say, yeah, the Brooklyn is going to attack the Mogumi immediately. So, um, we're still using a broadside here. So, we still get a pretty potent hit of one, two, three, four, five individual attack dice. Unfortunately for us, like I was saying, um, the hit on this guy, since we're not hitting him on the side, his uh, target is normally a five up. It goes up to a six up because he moved seven inches. So, one, two, three, four, five. So, a six up. Two hits. That's not bad. So armor on this particular character is a three up, so we need a three up to do any actual damage. So we get a three up, so we do a minimum of two damage, and there's a possibility of one critical hit. So we're going to drop the Mogami to ten there. So um, let's confirm the critical hit on a four or higher. Five. Critical hit time. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and roll these two and see what comes out. So that's a 4 and a 5. That's an 11. Let's go ahead and take a look at the critical hit table here. An 11 is a weapon hit. So now what we need to do is go ahead and uh, take this dice again, give it a quick little wiggle, and we have to see what the weapon hit actually did. A 1. Anti-aircraft weapons damaged. So this isn't great. Because um, what it's going to do is it's going to increase the damage, so now it's actually going to drop him down to 9 hit points. And it's also going to cause a crew hit. So now we're at 37 crew members. And um, if we had aircraft in this battle, it would actually make a difference, but he doesn't. Okay, so that's it. for. Oh, actually, the Brooklyn's got his secondaries as well. The uh, secondaries on the Brooklyn. I'm going to go, of course, I lost my page. I hate it when that happens. There we go. The seconds on the um, Brooklyn, of course, are two damage dice. So we're still at a six up, though. Swing and a miss. All right. So uh, now the Mugum, uh, the Kumano is going to attack the Brooklyn. So the Brooklyn is pretty darn close. So um, it's still only going to be using those front two batteries, which has actually, I think, worked in the Americans' favor quite a bit. So he's only going to get two dice. So we're hitting the broadside, so that's going to knock one off of it. So normally this is a five up, that goes to a four. But he moved seven, so that's going to knock him back up to a five again. So we are seven. That knocks him back up to a five. Yes, so it's going to be a five. Uh, we get a 4 and a 1, so neither one of these shells hits. So um, the Mugami, of course, is, um, I should say, the Kumano. Um, this is gonna, not going to just take that as it is. He's going to go ahead and use his secondary armament, too, which get two attack dice. So it's also going to be a 5 up. Two more misses. This is just not his day. It's a shame he doesn't have torpedoes. Oh, wait a minute. He does have torpedoes. So his torpedoes only attack in the port and starboard side, but unfortunately, it is not in the line of fire. So the Brooklyn is saved by my own forgetfulness. Going down to the American side here, 
Um, the Kagero, of course, is going to, uh, I should say, the Fletcher is going to go ahead and uh, pretend to attack him out of range, so that's no good. Um, the Kagero class, I should say, the Koshiro, is completely out of range for both torpedoes and guns, which is actually a good thing. So that is the end of that round. Now, if you remember, um, we did receive a critical hit, so it's possible for the Kumano to actually repair that hit. To do that, we're going to take a D6, and we're going to add 4 to it. So that's 9, which means that the anti-aircraft, the uh, AD guns, I should say the anti-aircraft guns, actually have been repaired. But it doesn't change the actual damage or the crew loss. Next turn, this battle's been going almost an hour. So the Americans are going to roll there, the Japanese are going to roll here. What do we get? Americans get a 6, the Japanese get a 7. So the Japanese are going to elect to uh, move first this time, because I think they're learning their lesson that um, it's a little more difficult to catch this thing than you think it is. So um, what he's going to do is uh, he's in a collision situation. So we're going to go ahead and move up our 3.5. Keep in mind, this would, if you do collide like this, you move it, and then you just move it back. We're going to do our mo uh, little move, and then we're going to move him back the rest of the movement here himself. So he's going to pull right alongside the American here. This is actually bad because they're running out of board space. So now the Americans get to go. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Brooklyn, of course. He's going to come forward a little bit. Technically, that would be collision, so you back him up a little bit. He's going to do his turn, and then he's going to do the rest of his motion here. Putting him in a position looks kind of like this. So that's, that, that's, that's interesting. That was probably... No, he's got two guns back there. It's not all bad. Okay, so now we're going to scoot over to our Kagero-class destroyer, the uh, Koroshio. Oh, uh, boy, he can't make that turn. So he's actually going to have to go wide so he doesn't accidentally go off the table. So he's going to move three and a half. He's also going to go flank speed, I've decided. Gets two. And then he's going to do... Um, he goes all the way out another six and a half to go out to ten inches. And there we go. So now the Fletcher gets to do his thing. So the Fletcher is going to opt for a normal motion. So he's going to come forward three and a half. He's going to do his two clicks. And then he's going to come forward the rest of the three and a half. Hopefully getting a free hit on the Kumano. All right. Attack phase. The Kumano, naturally, at this range, is going to be attacking the uh, Brooklyn class, who's safely out of the torpedo range. So um, I practically don't need to measure that. It's four inches away. So as usual, when you're using the Mogami class heavy cruiser, you're shooting with the two front guns, and that's going to give us two attack dice. Um, the target number on this gentleman here is a five up, but he moves seven inches, so it goes to a six up, minus one, because of, no, he's not broadsiding. He's just giving him the back now. So no, that becomes a six up, which is kind of interesting. So we roll that. Looks like the Japanese got one hit. So we're going to go ahead and roll this. We need a three up to do damage. Okay, that was a hit, but not a critical. So we're going to come back to the CA Brooklyn. We're going to knock this down to 11. So the Japanese are a little worse off for wear, but not too, too bad. So we're going to go ahead and attack with our secondary weapons. Our secondary armor, we get two attack dice also. So it looks like we are going to get uh, one hit. Roll for damage. It's considered weak. So it's a six minus one. It still does damage, but um, we're going to have to check for that critical hit to see if anything bad happens to the Brooklyn. All right, we need a four or higher to confirm the critical. And that's a one, so no critical hit on the Brooklyn. So uh, moving on, it is now the Brooklyn's turn. So he has two guns, actually, who can hit the Mogami from where he is. Checking range. Range is obviously fine. So we get two attack dice. So normally the Kumano is a five up, but he moved fast, so it's a seven. We're not getting the beam on him, so it stays at a five up. A six up, rather. Let's give that a quick roll. Both miss. We're now going to use the secondary armor. We get two dice for that also. Both miss, so it just was not a good turn in that regard. So it is now uh, the Japanese turn. He's way out of range of everything, so he's going to shoot at nothing. The Americans, um, he's going to order up a shot. Again, his range is a little limited. It's just going to land in the water short. Now we go to the uh, end of this phase. So um, we're good. There's nothing to process. We're going to go ahead and uh, roll initiative again. So we have a six against a four. So again, the Japanese have won initiative. So um, the Japanese in this particular case see that they're running out of table. So he's going to go ahead and um, move up three and a half. He's going to turn one click 
and then he's going to move uh, his other three and a half. Perfect. So now the Americans get to go. So I'm actually going to use this guy. So I'm going to move him up three and a half. That's half of his movement. He gets two clicks. And then I'm going to move him up the other three and a half of his movement. And I'm really, really going to hope that he's going to be in range of something. So um, now the Japanese get to go again. He is literally running off the table here because he's moving so fast. So he's got to start turning very aggressively. He's got to come all the way here. Two clicks. Gets another three and a half. It's got to be about right there. He moves up. Two more clicks. He's out of range of everything. He's got to join the fight. So uh, now the uh, Brooklyn, of course, has got to decide what he's going to do. He's pretty confident the Japanese are going to try to run him off the table. So uh, I don't want to do this, but we're going to have to. We're going to come forward half of our movement. And... Hmm... Don't really have a lot of room. He could run me off the table. I gotta turn away from him. And keep in mind we only have to move half. That's gonna put it that. Oh, if that's the case, I'm moving that far and staying. You don't have to move your full distance. Yes, that makes him easier to hit, but I'd rather take the broadside and give the broadside because I'm doing slightly better than he is. Uh, now it's on to attack phase. The Japanese get to go first. So it's about time to do a proper broadside. So, um, yeah, the Mokami's got one, two, three, four, five dice that are coming this way. Uh, it's going to be on a five up because the American did nothing to get out of the way. But it's beaming him, which means it's now a four up. This might end the life of the poor Brooklyn ship. He ran out of table. So four, he's beaming. So yeah, four up. One, two, three hits. We get three attack dice. The armor in the Brooklyn is a three. Three hits. Good thing there's no criticals. So uh, that was a heck of a hit. So we're going to go over to the Brooklyn here. He's now down to seven. So he's dinged up pretty bad. We're going to use the secondary armament now. This is also going to be on a four up. So that's two more hits. We get two more dice. These are weak, so you have to subtract one. Both possible criticals. So we're going to take two more damage. So the uh, poor Brooklyn is um, not doing so well here. He's almost to the crippled phase, which uh, will be interesting if that occurs. Now we've got to roll to confirm the two criticals. We need a four or higher to confirm the criticals. No. Okay, that was interesting. So um, the Brooklyn, of course, is going to return fire. So the Brooklyn is getting the beautiful, beautiful broadside there. But unfortunately, the Kumano did move seven inches, so it stays at a five up. One, two, three. Three, four, five attack dice from the Brooklyn in this particular case. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, we also get secondary. So we are hitting on a five up. One. Lovely. Uh, damage, I believe, is a three up. Three up. Yeah, no damage done. So we get secondary attacks. We have two. Notice I didn't use a torpedo. Go ahead and roll that also. Um, we need a 5 up, I think. Yeah, 5 up. So the Brooklyn did horrible. So this poor guy over here, the Koroshiro, he is way too far away to cause any damage. The Fletcher is going to go ahead and attack. He's 18 inches away. The Fletcher's uh, maximum range is 12 inches, so the shells land on the water right about here. And that's the end of that phase. So things are not looking good for the Americans at this time. We'll see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and roll initiative. The Americans get a 10, the Japanese get an 8. Ah, lucky day. Okay, so um, that's great news. That is, that, that's pretty good. So the Brooklyn, of course, is um, running out of table here, because if he goes off, he's considered theoretically destroyed. Or not destroyed, he's left the fight. So we're going to do two clicks, and we've got to stay on the table here, and he's going to stay right there. Uh, let, let's risk it. We're going to come forward an inch. Okay, so now it is the Japanese turn. So he's going to come forward three and a half inches. Because he's got a turn also. He's going to turn twice. Can he do his three and a half again? That would put him pretty much in the same spot the Americans are, but he couldn't. Yeah, uh, no. So we're going to keep them right there. All right, so now it's time for this guy down here. He's going to keep going. Uh, three, and we're going to go flank speed again. Two clicks. So three and a half out of ten, six and a half more that it can go. 
Perfect. The Fletcher here, of course, is going to try to get this. He's got to join this fight if he can. He's going to move forward that distance. Two clicks. He's going to move forward that distance. Unfortunately, he will not be able to employ torpedoes. All right. Attack phase. So the Brooklyn's got to attack the um, Kumano right here. Fortunately, that range is close, but he didn't get up to full speed this time. So his target rating goes to a four, and I get five dice to attack him with. We'll see what happens this time. One, two, two, aw, oh, two hits. The armor rating on this the Kumano is a three up, so I need a three or better. Do I have weak weapons? No. Of course, somebody will point out the fact that I've ignored the fact that these weapons are twin link this entire time. All right, so that's um, two hits. That's also two damage, no critical hit. So we'll have to see what our secondary batteries can do. It's Again, it's a lot to keep track of. So that goes down to a seven. So we're now going to use our secondary weapons, remembering that we have twin link this time. So uh, we get two dice, and we're going to be hitting on a four, I believe. Yes. Two dice hitting on a four. Remember, I can re-roll because they're twin linked. Re-roll this guy. Miss. So I get one hit. Damage roll is a five. So we do one extra point of damage. So um, he's down to six. He's almost at crippled status himself, but he's still, still going. Still going. Okay, so now it's the Japanese turn to end this. So uh, they're going to start by attacking the um, poor Brooklyn class with a torpedo, which will end this if the um, broadside does not. So we're going to attack with our five attack dice. Um, the attack this time, it's going to be a four up, five up. It's going to be down to a four up because we're getting a broadside. One. Ha. One. Roll that sucker again. And it's a three up for armor. Does he have the weak trait? No. So that is another hit. So editing this guy real quick, the Brooklyn is down to crippled status. We'll roll for crippled status in a minute because the torpedo is about to hit him in the side. So um, we're going to go ahead and use the Fletcher, um, the secondary armament. We get two attack. Uh, neither one of them hit. So the Fletcher is now going to go ahead and uh, try to contribute what he can contribute. So um, he gets his two uh, secondary weapon die. We're going to be hitting on a four up. So that's two misses. So this just ended, I think. All right, so the torpedo on the Megami class cruiser, it is considered, which side are we on? That is a port torpedo. You get three attack dice with that. One, two, three. You get to add one to it, ignoring all the modifiers. So that would be a three up, I believe. So it's one hit. Um, you get five dice for a successful hit. I'm using the wrong dice here. I'm gonna put that away. There we go. So um, the armor rating is a three. We don't have a special torpedo belt or anything like that. This might kill this guy. Two hits, which pushes him way into critical territory, crippled territory. And we also get to roll to see if that critical actually takes place. So let's go ahead and see. We need a four up for that critical to actually do something. No. So that is uh, interesting, but the American ship is actually crippled at this time. So take the torpedo off. The torpedo wasn't nearly as effective as we were hoping it would be. So um, this ship is now crippled. Uh, what does that mean? That means that we can only do half moves, half speed. We also have to roll to see which one of our turrets gets hit. Um, any three or lower means the turret lives. Anything four up means the turret is gone. So I have five turrets. I'm going to go ahead and roll. One, I lose one turret. I'm just going to assume that's uh, probably this one right up. Well, let's say it's the middle turret, the Q turret. Now we are check our secondary armament. We need three or less. Let's keep using it. No, so the secondary armament is also out of whack. Uh, taking a look, we have aircraft four, and we also have radar. Is our radar out of commission? Radar is out of commission. If we had an aircraft that we were using, the aircraft actually still fine. So um, the game will continue. Now we're, it's almost an hour and 20 minutes time, game time, so to speak. All right, so um, we're going to start with initiative like we always do. I think the Americans are going to win this one. Yeah, definitely. Five against 11, I think the Americans get to go first. Okay, so um, things are not going well at all for Brooklyn, but um, anything can happen. So um, he's hit really bad. He can only manage half speed. So half speed for him is actually only three and a half. So um, we're still going to go that 
we're still going to move our two clicks, which puts us about here. Japanese are going to move as well. Um, that's going to be a collision as well. So they're going to have to move back. And then he's going to have to move. So they're going to stay roughly in this position. Um, this poor uh, Kagero class here, he's going to keep doing his flank speed thing. Three and a half inches, two clicks. So that's going to move him another six and a half inches as he races across my ruler to try to catch up. The Fletcher is, um, he's not giving up easy. He's going to do three and a half inches. Do his two clicks. Then he's going to move another three and a half inches. And he's going to try to use his torpedoes to finish this. So this, this battle's not over. Okay. So it is now time for us to move on to the uh, next phase here. So um, normally, if the torpedoes move faster, I would use that Fletcher class to do his thing first. Because his torpedoes hurt a lot. But um, we're not going to. We're going to use the Brooklyn class to attack. So remember, he's down one gun. So he only gets four. We're going to remember the twin link this time. So um, he did not move his full distance. So that makes him down to a four because it's a broadside. So we need a four up. We get to reroll anything we don't like. So that's two hits. So um, we need a three up to confirm the hit. Where's it going? So we get one hit. So um, that is unfortunate. So the Magami takes another hit, which almost puts him down to crippled territory also. But um, that's OK. We're now going to use our secondary weapon. We get two die for that. They're also twin linked. So that's a five and a four. I don't need to re-roll that. Uh, my secondary armament, I believe, is weak. It is. So I need a four greater to actually damage him. And I do. I get two more hits, which actually sends him down to crippled territory also. So um, that's actually interesting how that played out. But since uh, he's not done, we still need to actually measure to see how much damage has occurred to him. So he is in crippled status now. So um, he's got five guns also, plus secondary armament. So a three or less means it gets to stay going. Okay, here. So he loses two guns. I'll say it gets his secondary and it gets his uh, Q turret. He can only move half speed now also. All right, so um, he's going to return the favor. So uh, he's only down. Um, he still gets four dice to attack with, which is still really, really good. Uh, he's going to be hitting me on a four up. One, two, three. None of them hit. Remember, his secondary weapon's out of commission. This battle is not over yet. All right, so the Fletcher is immediately going to pop off a torpedo. And the Fletcher is also going to attack with his two beautiful uh, secondary weapons there. It's going to be hitting on, let's see, what is the Kumano's normal? Is a five up down to a four. Snake eyes. Um, I don't think they're twin linked. Nope, that's disappointing. Oh, well. We'll deal with that in a second. Um, of course, the Kigero. Um, cannot do anything. This is the Koroshiro. He's way over there. So now it's time to go ahead and evaluate to see if the torpedo will finish this once and for all. So the torpedo gets five attack dice. So there's four. We go ahead and grab the fifth. And our hit up on this one is going to be a five. Minus one is a four up because we're hitting his broadside. One, two, three, four hits. Interesting. What is the attack dice on this particular character? His attack dice is four. So I get four per four hits. So I need 16 dice. There's another four. And there we go. I think this ends this. So let's see here. The cruiser itself, his armor is three up. I'm just going to confirm to see if it's AP. It is. That actually reduces the armor to a two up. Oh boy. So we need twos or higher to uh, end this real quickly. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So this battle was done by Fletcher. So the Mogami Cruiser is gone. So I'll add this to the pile of busted stuff. A beautiful shot. All right, end phase. So there's nothing to take care of at the end phase at this time. So um, we're just going to kind of move on and uh, hope things kind of work well for us. All right, so I think this will probably be um, a good time for this particular character, the Kura Shiro, to realize he could technically still win this, but it's probably, you know, game. But uh, he's still got torpedoes, and the Brooklyn's hurt pretty bad. But I'd say at this point he's going to withdraw from the fight, which means it is a barely American victory. Taking a look at our final cards here, you can see how we lost a ship on that side. Over on this side, of course, we lost one extra ship as well. The Brooklyn itself is going to be in the repair bay for a very long time. Hopefully we see it again at the end of World War II. All right, minus my mistakes with the twin linked and uh, little details with the torpedoes. That's generally how a game at Victor at Sea is played. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed, and 
know, maybe next time we'll look at submarines and airplanes.